webcam is messed up a little bit there uh still out of focus for whatever reason oh right there we go all fixed and dandy so team snorlax uh, took gaming game one um pretty pretty convincingly there was literally not a single curse for the side of are you relevant they pretty much were out traded in every team fight not a, a single one that really went in their favor unfortunately and well team snorlax didn't even need to do anything the winnians took it for them we'll see if uh irrelevant can change this game around though show us that they got what it takes to beat team snorlax so we'll jump on into the draft now so things are starting off once again with the genji ban on this map, even more than I'd say Cursed Hollow, it's even more important. Because a Genji is able to act like a Zero Tool or a Tracer and come on and poke and or kill someone. And then, well, you get a ton of top lane pressure and you get control of the objective. Because then you can rotate everyone else down bottom and fight for it. And top could potentially rotate down the mid to pick up the dragon this time around we're going to see dagger cane actually banned out now this is a smart strategy if you're concerned about the enemy team actually picking up dagger cane as their first pick especially since you just used it and dagger cane is just a fantastic support with a plays that he can actually make. So finally, we're going to get the Asmodin a band out here. A, not a, a very common ban. On this map, he can stack a little bit faster because the lanes are shorter. So an understandable ban nonetheless. Do your worst. So, irrelevant. I'm not sure if they learned their lesson. Because I feel like they're going to just pull the same strategy of putting Malthael up against Yurel. And then Yurel won't be able to hold the lane. I've also heard several people claim that Yurel will lose to Artanis. But they're going to go once again with the Haka and Johanna. Uh, they could still go with the Malthael for a weird lane setup. Uh, but... At least right now, we're going to assume Dahaka is indeed facing off against Jarell. We're now going to get the Muradin, who was banned out last game, and we will get the Li Ming. The thing I don't like about the Li Ming is that a good Johanna player will be able to often block a key component of Li Ming's damage, which is the orb, by just hitting the iron skin at the right moment or walk forward enough and it does inconsequential damage especially if you have laws of hope you'll be able to just pop it and heal up any damage that you took phoenix will now be banned out not wanting it to go into the hands of their opponent although they do have the next uh, next turn for the choices so that means they have a different draft strategy in mind So at this point, they should be banning a support. It's one of the few things that you know, but they're going to ban the Mouth Ale. They're not going to want to face the same cheeky Mouth Ale versus Urel matchup that came later on. But this now lets them choose any support, like a Malfurion, for instance. And Malfurion does not cope great against Burst. But like I said, Johanna and Dahaka will also be there to help block a lot of the damage from Li Ming. And she'll have to get a good position to get behind or to the side in order to take out Raynor and Grammy. Additionally, Raynor does have his own self-heal to prevent him from, you know, being instantly blown up. Now, the Grammy, this is one of these issues that I feel lots of teams have they continue to pick Greymane, but Greymane has not had 
that much success or see that much play at the pro level anymore and a lot of a lot of teams seem to not be picking this up in some of the lower divisions where they continue to cling to the gray main and we're going to get the alex straza with the cassia here and so malfurion will be their final choice and with the Cassia blind against Greymane and Rainer, this is a potentially high value. To be fair, Greymane also does do ability damage with his Worgen and with Go for the Throw. So not all is not lost there, but with the blind, the peels from Urel and Muradin and the slow, and probably a knockback from Li Ming, I'm not sure how much Greymane will actually accomplish in this game. Now, First game, I thought the draft overall was better for Team Snorlax. This game, I feel the draft might be better for Irrelevant, especially when Irrel does not have to deal with the same problem or same menace of Malthael against her. And with Murden, they'll have a tankier tank and he won't be going down quite as easily like Tyrael. So I'm going to I'm going to tip it a little bit over to your relevant this game. But it comes down to execution, of course. Heroes, prepare for combat. Jumping into the game. We got Dread on the Li Ming. We got Jamster once again on Urel. We have Captain Muramask on the Muradin. We got Speed Demon on the Cassia. Patience on the Alexstrasza, and that is going to be irrelevant. On the other side, we have Noob Slayer 67 on the Grey Main, Kui on the Johanna, Green Pickles on the Rainer. We also have a Noob Slayer 76 on the Malfurion, and finally, once again, Potato Ninja on that Dahaka, and that'll be Team Snorlax. So, avoiding the traditional footsie fight in mid, we're going to have both teams are set up early. So we're going to have Lei Ming in the mid, Cassia and Alex Strauss on the bottom. Of course, Shirel in the top, and Dahak is actually bottom right now. He's not going to catch the wave and be able to uh, burrow on up. He will have to burrow on up sooner rather than later. And there we go. There's the burrow and there's the rotation. So it looks like they're opting to keep Red in the mid lane. I don't think this is very, very um, potent because Li Ming is an exceptionally poor laner and uh, Dread didn't actually land his orb correctly to get the maximum value for clearing the waves anyways. So th that's another problem. Uh, if you're going to have Li Ming actually clear the waves, Li Ming has to be using optimal orbs to help her or help her team actually clear efficiently otherwise they'll just keep shoving that lane in in mid and they'll keep doing whatever they want as a four man and always outnumber irrelevant in all situations while dread just like painfully tries to clear up the waves in top point lane uh, well jamster is winning that as Urel does beat pretty much everyone the bot lane we got ourselves a 2v3 actually while we have green pickles and noob slayer start up this camp but dread coming in early and they have given up the dk all in the name of a night camp and that is a very poor play from team snorlax getting ultra greedy and then losing malfurion on top of that now they also have to face siege giants a dk Irrelevant getting, I'd say, a little lucky in that Team Snorlax just so got so greedy. They thought they could defend bottom 2v3, take a night camp, which is not very important overall, especially at that point in the game, and then stop the DK if they should be able to channel it with their man advantage. Or two man advantage, to be fair, since there was no one in mid top of that so they've got in mid Urel is uh down here 
going to be able to help Dread, but Dread, oh, does get the blink on out. Jabs are trying to save the day, won't be able to do so, and the booty of a lame mink has been chewed up by Noob Slayer 67. Welcome to the Noob crew, Dread, because uh, you've been, been in the belly of noobs. Now, they're going to finally get this... <laughs> This night camp this time a little bit better on the timing here not as greedy we do have gems are rotating down gray main will clear this up relatively quickly on the other side and dread is now back and be able to hold this lane once again so let's take a quick look at some of the talents we have here we have ace in the hole on the fighter flight since exposed a laws of hope perfect aim coming out like very old school build here our Rejuve, Vengeful Roots. We do have the rest of the Cocktail build coming on out. Uh, we also have Nature Secure, the Enhanced Agility, one who collects in Symbiosis for the Dark Swarm. In top lane, Noob Slayer just trying to get as much value as he can on here with those Knights to open things up. Now, we also have the Unstable Compound and this is Zealous Glare. Wow, you almost never see anyone take this. The reason most people don't take this is her auto attacks are hella slow. There's also the gap you have to close from where you actually use it. So if you are running at someone, you're effectively losing value or you're taking damage from their autos if you don't use it prior. But if you use it prior to getting up to them, well, then you're not getting zealous glare value and won't be able to keep on blinded longer. Additionally, on the other side, we got the Divine Seed. We got Potato Ninja coming on in, Noob Slayer. But Captain Mura coming on over the wall. Going to get the stun. Going to peel and save the day. Because Captain Mura Mask is here to make some plays. So top lane, we still have a Noob Slayer facing off against Jamster. They've changed things up a little bit. Figuring that Dahaka isn't doing so hot, I guess. And that, that's uh, their next best matchup. Nice stun coming on in from Captain Muramas. The root is in place. And they also have to worry about the broccoli as well. Speed Demon coming on in with the fan, but will be grabbed. There is no root follow-up to worry about. And we got the dragon being popped a little bit early here, I'd say. Not showing the restraint I like uh, with a dragon. Now, they are... They will have two sitting in mid, which means they cannot cap this. Dragon will go down before... Well, they'll be able to channel this at any point and noob slayer also has the ability to get on up here but jumpster will just jump on over the wall and call it a day to defend it so mid will not be picked up until they rotate but they can't really rotate until they push this lane in further to open it up and make it that much harder for them to rotate safely Hins, however, are nearing. We got Potato Ninja who has rotated up. The nice juke from Jamster jumping on over. We got the Divine Seed. And, uh, well, he'll be able to get out of there because Noob Slayer has decided to leave for now. Tens are being picked up. We got the Cursed Bullet, the Twilight Dream, the Contagion, or sorry, the Isolation, uh, Blessed Shield, Ball Lightning. We have Sacred Ground being chosen here. We also have the Avatar and the Wave of Force. So this could be a little great. We do see a full three man and they either need to finish this as a team or come on into and take the point. We do have a 1v1 here. Should be able to defend this. Dread will have a pretty easy time for now. Top is being a 1v1 with the Sacred Ground. Going to be able to hold that point and get the neutralization on the dragon. Nicely done. This is a, a not quite as common choice but on this map you can have a lot of value as we just saw and it's such a short cooldown that basically you sit up there solo and take you know 60% damage instead of 100% we got the ball lightning coming out and we did have the iron skin being used Quee going to be coming on and returning some pain but jams are going to knock him away with that hammer and at this point we're going to call it a day jamps are going to go back on top try and hold it clear up the lanes and in the bot lane well we still got a 2v2 
Kui and Crew might be coming on in. It's a 2v4, sorry, 3v4, and the grab on Speed Demon is going to be good enough to secure them a kill. Very nicely done by Potato Ninja and the rest by getting the double root lockdown onto Cassia. They call it a day, and now they might be able to get themselves a DK. So first things first, open up the bot lane. You're not going to get the objective with a Li Ming poking you. So you might as well get as much map pressure as you can. If you open up the map, it makes it that much easier to win. If you take down bottom four, you can march to the keep instead of taking down structures in the mid lane. So why not do that? And they get it. They can walk on out. It's still a 3v4. We have the cursed bullet coming on out. Not actually going to land on anything. Not a big deal because it's such a short cooldown. That, well, you can burn it uh, as much as you want. Kui trying to come on top and get the point. Jamps are now having to deal with a 2v1. Trying to juke and jive here against Potato Ninja. And Potato Ninja holding that drag really well. <laughs> having uh, some quite some good discipline there. And not burning it knowing that Jamster is expecting it. So they've now taken top, but now bottom is a 3v1. So they can't get... The DK once again. Both teams are actually doing a generally a good job after the initial mess up on Team Snorlax's part. This is turned into an almost impossible task, a Herculean task, if you will. We got Captain Muramask turning back onto Noob Slayer. A ball lightning coming on out as well. And they'll be perfectly fine, the two noobs. And with that, the cocktail going to help clear this up significantly from the safety of the fort as well. So taking a look at the stacks, we have 22 on Muradin. We have only three stacks on the Incendiary Elixir. Not very valuable at this point. Uh, the, really, the big deal is when you get the four-second cooldown. We got a huge curse bullet come on and in the Potato Ninja on the backside with the grab as well. Captain Muramask going to be blown up by the Twilight Dream follow-up in the Cleansing Flame. Trying to save the day, the big old blind. But it is not going to matter. We already got two members down. And DK is surely going to come around this time. Right, guys? Right? All right. So top still in control by Jamster. They need to rotate you up here to combat the situation. They need to have at least one in mid. They need one in bot. So they're going to cut and do this as a 1-2-2. Two, two. This is perfectly fine because you have one person block to channel the DK. One person hold a bottom. And we got... Dread already burning some stuff. All right, nothing he can do. Not wanting to step up against Noob Slayer. And DK has been picked up now for Team Snorlax. Captain Muramask going on in deep. Will be kicked on out. Not going to land the stun. Uh, not probably going to do much even if he did. So that was a very aggressive play with very little upside to it. Champs are coming on in the back. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Uh, they also need to avoid fighting 15 versus 16. They're down a full level at this point. They've taken four deaths. They've lost mid. They've lost bottom. They need to pick up some structures and or soak some XP. Oh, we got Jams are coming on in. It's trying to actually get him to avoid sieging. But this is actually going to just be his death. He gets all oh, the divine seeds. Going to get him out of dodge for a temporary amount of time. But not long enough. DK will be going down here very, very shortly. But that is at the cost of Jamster's life. So, I understand what Jamster was trying for. I think he went a little too far. Baiting him a little bit too much. We got the Curse Bullet coming out of the Blessed Shield as well. And the instant annihilation with the Twilight Dream follow-up. Speed Demon. Speed Demon just managing to survive. Coming on in with the Cleansing Flame as well. They'll try to dissuade any further engagement. But this is still... A game without a tank. We got Jamster back in it. And they might be able to turn this. We got Jamster coming on in. The knockback. But the turn on the Speed Demon. And they're chewing through his booty. And Speed Demon will be going down here. And another kill for Team Snorlax. So once again. They managed to keep their keep up. 
and they managed to get themselves to 16 very very short so even though this situation looks bad this is pretty good pretty good for your relevant now they're not getting kills but they're getting themselves to 16 they've barely taken any damage on their keep we're talking a slither of damage a slither of damage is not going to be the end of the world with 16s now available with 16s and now available the team fight situation is going to be very different so taking a look at what 16s we have we got the holy wrath here we got martial law the stone form Draconic a discipline and a mirror ball. So significantly more damage coming out. They're looking for the Murden again. The drag on Tim, the curse bullet, Murrah mask, overly aggressive. The root though has a speed demon and the silence, the double silences. And they say goodbye to two members in the blink of an eye. And now this is very likely going to be game. Uh this is this is a large siege. This is barely anything they can do. They only have Lee Mink here really to DPS and it is not going to be enough as they can basically sit in the wave and Team Snorlax takes a fairly easy 2-0 against Irrelevant. I think one of the big problems here, which we'll see at the end of the, the game and take a look at the stats, Captain Murrah Mask with three deaths and Speed Demon with four deaths. Captain Murrah Mask is playing like he's invincible and not respecting the team he is facing. He's it's kind of like he's expecting Kui not to use Bless Shield at any given point, that there won't be a follow up with a drag or in isolation, and there won't be a curse bullet on him, and there won't be Rainer's Raiders on him, and there won't be a Twilight Dream potentially on him. Like, there's so many tools to keep him from leaving that the way Captain Muramask was playing was just just wild. And it shows on there with the three deaths. Now, Speed Demon obviously died more. There's a little bit more give there because often those deaths came post-Muradin. That's two. But that's, that's often a time where you have to just accept you've lost something and you have to give up potentially even more than you'd like which would be a keep rather than losing the game, give up the keep and potentially come back. The team fight from Irrelevant is not on point. In fact, I'd say the biggest struggle for Irrelevant is that they lose people either prior to like a full fight on equal tiers when they're not expecting it. So it seems like team communication is not there because if they were expecting to fight, then everyone should have been following up with Muradin. If no one was expecting a fight, then Captain Muramask is um, is the problem. Then Captain Muramask needs to pull back and calm down, let off the gas, and, well, let things happen. Sometimes you got the best thing to do is nothing. And that's a, a problem you'll see in tons of games. People will lose a member on one team, and then they'll go and try to defend especially when they're down significantly they'll try to defend and give up even more than if they had just sat there in base at the core and did nothing and that's oftentimes what you need to do sit there and do nothing so we'll see if uh team snorlax would like to do an interview so we'll be right back so sit on tight